Leonard Wood. It covers 71,000 acres of the Mark Twain National Forest in the Missouri Ozarks, southwest of St. Louis. It was in December of 1940 that the groundbreaking ceremonies commenced. Only a handful of officials were present on that day, but it was an unknown soldier from a huge army of construction workers that turned the first shovel full of dirt for the beginning of the nation's largest engineer training center, a post that has over the years trained thousands of fighting men. There were many difficulties encountered during the construction, but nevertheless, the work continued at a furious pace, and the fort was virtually completed by the beginning of May. With the completion of the fort and the 22-mile stretch of railroad track leading to it, soldiers began pouring in at full speed. From the early part of 1941 until the post closed in 1946, Fort Leonard Wood had trained some 300,000 fighting men. During the years that followed the war, Fort Leonard Wood lay dormant with only a handful of groundskeepers to care for it. Soon it was time to activate Fort Leonard Wood again. The year 1950 brought with it the need to train our fighting men once again. This time, it would be Korea. The fort was named in honor of Major General Leonard Wood. He was born October 9, 1860 in New Hampshire. He was a graduate of Harvard Medical School, was White House physician to President William McKinley, and was military governor of Cuba. But most notably, General Wood won the Medal of Honor for his action in the campaign against the Apache Indian chieftain Geronimo. The museum here at Fort Leonard Wood contains much memorabilia, from the pictures of the original construction to weapons of past wars. Care has been taken to ensure that every detail is exact. The Fort Leonard Wood Museum houses one of the most extensive collections of firepower in the United States. During the Korean conflict, Fort Leonard Wood supported the 6th Armored Division. On March 16, 1956, the 6th Armored Division was inactivated and replaced with the United States Army Training Center Engineer. The Secretary of the Army signed the order March 21, 1956, making Fort Leonard Wood a permanent installation. I am a drill sergeant. I will assist each individual in their efforts to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier capable of defeating any enemy on today's battlefield. I will instill pride in all I train, pride in self, in the army, and in country. I will insist that each soldier meets and maintains the army standards of military bearing and courtesy consistent with the highest traditions of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never requiring a soldier to attempt any task I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. It is to these drill sergeants that we dedicate this film. It was almost pitch black as we arrived, pretty unnerving. As the bus unloaded and I saw that first drill sergeant standing there, I began to ask myself, what have I done? Is it too late to turn back? Before I could muster another thought, we were inside and learning the position of attention. As we stood at attention, while they played the Star Spangled Banner, a strange feeling came over me, pride. I was also struck with a sense of belonging. I had a feeling it was going to be tough, but then again I knew that. But I also knew it would be worth it. I was going to be part of the greatest team around. We were welcomed by the post commander in a videotape presentation. The commander of the videotape told us about the long and proud traditions of the United States Army and that it is something we should be proud of and that we should uphold the standards of those that came here before us. We were warned about contraband such as knives, guns, drugs and nuclear warheads. They said this would be our last chance to divest ourselves of anything. If we were caught with anything to be considered contraband after tonight, we would face serious consequences. They didn't have to tell me twice. Then it was time for all that paperwork. Man, there was a ton. But the good part was that after we leave here, some good warm chow and bed. This is the contraband room. This is where we leave the nuclear warheads. The close crop has always been a favorite of mine. What really impressed me was how long it takes. Talk about fast and accurate. 
Oh well, it'll grow again, I hope. This is immunization. It looks worse than it really is, and it has to be done. The Army wants you to be protected from everything. Some of us were a bit more apprehensive than others at this part. Blood tests. This is the part that separates the men from the boys. Some people just can't stand to see themselves separated from their own blood. It was now time to shed ourselves of the last remnants of civilian life and get something more suitable to hot and cold weather alike. Here we were outfitted with pants, shirts, underwear, socks, shoes, belts, gloves, and hats so quickly that we hardly had time to complain about the fit. It's amazing. It all fits. to meet him, the man who we would spend the next eight weeks with, the man who would shape us into soldiers, our drill sergeant. Oh boy. Thank you. One of you people say R-A, E-R, or N-G without the ma'am, you're mine. You will owe me and I will collect. For the next eight weeks, this man would be our cautioning voice, helpful hand, and watchful eyes that would guide us through probably eight of the most strenuous and demanding weeks of our lives. This man was to be looked at with admiration. There is a Coke machine, along with other various items of carbonated soft drinks. You will not, I repeat, you will not even look at it. If I get one of my people looking at it, you are definitely mine. You will have your salt and pepper on the table, along with napkins. We had an incident where people didn't put them back. You will return salt, pepper, napkin holder to its proper place on the table. You will clean up any food that is dropped. You will clean up any mess that is there. Because I don't want to have someone coming over to me and saying, my people up the table the mess. I will not tolerate it. At this time, I want you to put your ID card back. Go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. I turn into the <laughs> Here we are issued ponchos, ammo belts, steel pots, rubber boots, and many other items which might be best suited for hard work and soldiering.
this is where we live. Soon it will be time for an inspection. There's shoes to shine, floors to wax, lockers to straighten up, socks to fold, buttons to button. And there's also beds to make. Every detail is attended to because if it's not, I don't even want to think about it. And then it's time for inspection. Ronfield Falls, who's the Italian commander? Lieutenant Colonel Holsworth, sir. Who's your uh, company commander? Captain Johnson, sir. On the position of attention. Executing the bow base. Executing on the bow base. Stand at ease. I'm going to start inspecting your wall locker. I want you to face me as they go through your wall locker. Got two, un two buttons unbuttoned here on your uh, BDU jack there, Prime. Yeah, two buttons undone on your BDU jack. Army food, good and good for you. Specially prepared by dietitians that know what you want and need. Go ahead, load those plates, you'll need the energy. Everybody gets a chance to do KP. It's an honor that you won't want to miss. Something to tell your grandchildren. While we were still eating lunch, busy hands are back in the kitchen preparing dinner. Can you imagine how much time it takes to feed a couple hundred hungry soldiers? Now it was time to get acquainted with our M16s. Learning how to handle it is one of the many parts to basic rifle training. It takes a while, but you catch on with the patience and help of your drill sergeant. Drill and ceremony. It definitely takes time to get the hang of this. Don't laugh. We'll be looking good real soon.
All right, so, so being in step is important. We know. Our training day is never complete without physical training. On or off the field, our physical fitness is being honed to a razor's edge. You can usually hear us saying, more PT, Sergeant, more PT. get a little different PT. That's because they're in advanced individual training. Call it cryptically the gas chamber. That's where we're headed. After carefully putting on our protective masks, we lined up to feel and taste the experience. And it was an experience. Sunday was a time for reflection for all as we attended church services.
After, we moved in different directions. For some, it was the telephone. Time to call home, talk to mom and dad, and even my little brother. Others wrote letters. Dear Aubrey, thanks for the picture. Later on, for those of us that had a pass, that was a privilege you had to earn. We could visit the main PX, where everything you ever thought of was for sale. Recreation Center, where a guy could shoot a game of pool, play some ping pong, even play a little music, and just sit around and listen to some records. Then there's bowling, the sport of kings. Back to work, the zero rifle range. Here we learn to sight in our weapons by firing a few rounds. Then our targets are checked by our drill sergeants and then together we adjust the sights for maximum efficiency and firing power. Also known as the during the demonstration phase that he did miss a multiple type target on the first round. At any range before we take our weapons in hand, we are given a complete briefing on safety and what we are expected to accomplish while we are there. Exercise magazines. Sometimes they're dirty, bent, or whatever. We took turns. First one fires, and then the other is the coach. Then we reverse positions. Each range is different. Today, here we would fire our M16s on automatic, then after that is completed, we will place on our protective masks and fire semi-automatic. This is range one. Here every shot counts more than ever. At this range we qualify. Today we get our Class A uniforms. This signifies that we are only a few short weeks away from basic graduation. We are carefully fitted here. These are the ones we wear home, proudly.
One of the treats we all have is waiting for the firing of the M60 machine gun. This is the grenade launcher, and here it's being demonstrated for us. Whether it's in the mess hall or in the field, chow is always a welcome sight. They bring it out to us by truck and quickly and efficiently, we are all fed. Firing the law rocket is another thrill. This powerful weapon, when using real live ammunition, is fired once and then discarded. These are practice rounds. Bravo flag. Today it means live grenades. After running the mock course, it's time for a safety briefing. When you stop to think about it, this is a lot of destruction in your hand. Kind of scary. I found that we paid real close attention to the instructor when he gave us final instructions. Running the confidence course does for you exactly what it says. When you're through with this course, you have confidence you never knew existed. You have to reach deep down inside yourself and pull out the man that you know lies there.
This is the personal endurance course. We call it PEX. This course gives you the feeling of running under actual battle conditions, from rope bridges to crawling under barbed wire. You push hard, muscles strain, teeth clench. All the time, your drill sergeant is there to help you through.
Again we practice, this time with bayonets. Time to hit the assault course. Ah! Over walls, across trenches. Thrust. Hit the enemy, hit him hard. races through your body as you near the finish. This course is so intense that you have to remind yourself that it's not real. Hell, hell. Now it's time to practice for our basic trainees end of cycle test. Kilo, this is what it's all five, about, five, making nine, soldiers. Is, bravo, eight, pot, two, Here we are eight, tested on everything we have learned oh. for these past weeks. Who goes there? From first Who aid to communications, to, to map reading, oh. guard duty, disassembling and reassembling our weapon, and the law rocket. Back blast area is clear. graduation. Today, some will leave here, others will stay on for AIT, Advanced Individual Training. Some of the soldiers that began training never finished. Some could not meet the standards, some were discharged for medical reasons, and yet others were recycled for training. But those that did complete the training are standing tall. For many, it is their first real achievement in life. For others, it is just one more successful accomplishment. Now you are a soldier, ready to go on and learn your new military skill. Ready, trained, and confident in being able to do those skills a professional is required to do. Those who remain will emerge in another five weeks part of the proud tradition of engineer. They will have learned one of the many trades available to them.
There are the bridge building teams. Don't run, don't jump on the wall. Then there are those that conduct demolition. In the million dollar hole, they will learn not only to operate heavy equipment, but also how to maintain it. Here at Brown Hall, they will learn the basics in classroom studies. They will learn electrical, plumbing, masonry, and carpentry. Move over and give him some space. There you go. Charlie got a little serious. Now you have to smile and bow your head. Show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you're the motivator. Son, you're going to be a good man. Yeah, you have to smile and show that you Behind cover, go. 
Right hand side. Team leader's gonna grasp the weapon by the slip ring with his firing hand. Don't mess up, you're on camera. Make sure it's on safe. Peeks around the cover. Rolls 360 degrees to his non-firing side. And low crawls up to the edge of the road. This time when he moves out, he'll get on the left hand side. Okay. Gets up at the highest port, then moves to the left hand side of the log wall and gets down behind cover. Now listen, men. If you're on the left hand side, stay on the left hand side. If you're on the right hand side, stay on the right hand side. Do not fire your weapon until you're told to do so. You will know when it's time to fire your weapon. Once, it, once my team member does that, he'll roll 360 degrees to his non firing side, get up at the high port, move up. Once he moves through his next one, he'll show you. We're going to take his non-firing hand and motion the team leader to move out. The team leader's going to grab the weapon by the with his firing hand. Pull the weapon in behind cover, make sure the weapon is on safe. Leaks around the cover. Throws 26 degrees to his non-firing side and moves down to his next up hand side. Any questions? Go, move! All right, team leader will take his non-firing hand and motion the team member to move out once again. Team member is going to grab the weapon by the slip ring, pull the weapon in behind cover, make sure the weapon is on safe. Peach is on the cover, rolls to the six degrees to his non-firing side, gives it at the high port and moves to his next third position. Cover. Rolls 360 degrees to non firing side, gives it at the high port, and moves to his next curve position. Now, watch where he goes. Because he knows what he's doing. All right, follow me. You make sure that the buzzer of the weapon stays on the front of the field. Watch. Grab the weapon by the slip ring with the firing hand, and it's the non firing hand on the top of the field. Watch. Bend the knees slightly with the zip box, one inch off the ground, one inch back and roll. Hey! Get! Now, that's the main side of the move. Remember that you like the proudly pins this symbol on the collars of graduating AIT students. They will wear this pin proudly for the rest of their military careers. After graduation, we spend time with loved ones. But we'll never forget our days here at Fort Leonard Wood. This is where it all started.